to encourage each other when times are tough. And when we do that, when we understand that our relationship with God is not just a personal vertical relationship, a lot of people will say again, is I don't need this. In fact, when I get around people, I get all upset and it brings me down. So I stay at home and I turn on my TV and watch church. And that's my church. And I think that's the biggest lie that the devil can have is that you can have your relationship with God without fellowship. Who are you encouraging? Who are you sp spurring on to good works? And who is holding you accountable? Who is there to uh, praise the Lord with you when good things happen? You can't do that alone. And that's why, again, I say that the symbol of the cross, the, the vertical piece, is incomplete without the horizontal. The only way we can have a personal relationship with, a true personal relationship with the Father, is to allow other people to show the love of God through you, through them, to you. And when I have finally come to understand this point, I go, yeah, this is how God created us. He created us for fellowship. What was the, one of the first things God said to Adam? It is not good for man to be alone. To be alone. That's why women came about, right? <laughs> it's, it's all in God's plans, this idea of fellowship. Even within the Godhead, there is that fellowship. There's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they're in communion with each other. They're in fellowship <laughs> with each other. The neat thing is when God created us, He created, a, created so that we would be in fellowship with Him and each other. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So if you're weary today, just remember, Jesus, Endure all this suffering for you so that you will be able to endure this life. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? And it says, my son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline. And do not lose heart when he rebukes you. You know, sometimes the struggles that you're going through is not because life's bad on you. It's because you have caused some of the problems upon yourself. Not always, but sometimes. The struggles that we're going through is our own fault. What does Jesus say? Cast your cares upon him. Because he cares for you. Because the Lord disciplines the ones he loves. And he chastens everyone who he accepts as his son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. But what children are not disciplined by their father? What happens when a father does not discipline his child? What happens to that child? He ends up in jail. He goes rainward. And, in, and that's one of the things about our society is we have thrown out discipline and mistaken it for love. You don't believe me? You go to the school and um, 
the kid misbehaves. In my day, I remember, they had this thing called the Board of Education. Education. <laughs> so they're going to apply the, what? The, how do they go? <laughs> to the rear, you know? The seat of knowledge. The seat of knowledge, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, you've been there. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? What does the Bible teach? Spare the rod and spoil the, spoil the child. And now, when you go to school and the, the teacher wants to discipline the kid, the kid says, you can't do that. Or, or even to their own parents. There's so much disrespect that they say, if you spank me, I'm going to call Child Protective Services. You see how that's so disrespectful? Where have we gone? If we would read, read God's word, it, it clearly states that discipline is good. Discipline is actually showing that we care about them. Just as God disciplines us because he loves us so much. If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a while while they thought this, but God disciplines us for our good. In order that we may share his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Nathaniel, would you go and let them know that we're just about done? <clears throat> Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and your weak knees. Make level paths for your feet, so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood and have forgotten completely. You have completely forgotten his word of encouragement that addresses you as a father and addresses a son. It says, my son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline. Do not lose heart when he rebukes you. In Hebrews 12 it says, but we, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side. <coughs> Perplexed. Oh, but uh, let me start again. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crossed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Do you get it? Hardship is going to happen to us, especially if we're contending for the faith. This is a spiritual battle. Our, our, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, again, but against the principalities, against the dark forces of this age. And if we're contending the faith, we're going to get attacked. From all sides, we're going to feel like we're just crushed. Right? But Jesus says, do not fear, for I have overcome the world. We talked about that last week. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may, uh, may be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us. But life is at work in you. Do you not know that in a race, the runners, the all of them, they run. 
but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Do you get that? <coughs> Why compete if you're not going to want to get the prize? Are you going to get the prize? Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer being in the air. No, I strike a blow to my body, I make it my slave so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Are you looking forward to that prize that God has in store for you? I am. You know, we don't know when we're going to receive that crown be today. I'm ready. Are you?